welcome to the Business Fighter with Henry Penix. Henry has been the CEO, founder, and consultant to hundreds of companies worldwide. He retired a multimillionaire, financially independent at the age of 35. Henry grew up a preacher's son and was thrown in jail three times for various altercations. He knows what it means to come from nothing and have to fight his way to the top. Henry is the business fighter who will teach you strategic skills for winning in business and in life. Don't just spectate, participate. It's time to get in the ring. Hey, hi, this is uh, Henry Penix, the business fighter. Uh, welcome to the podcast. I've got on uh, an amazing guy who's made a fortune in real estate, Brian Page. Uh, he became a millionaire in his 20s as a, real, as a residential real estate investor, and then he lost it in the crash of 2008. He started all that all the way over, and he discovered a way to use other people's money to earn income. He went on to make six figures in just six months and over 300,000 his first year renting and listing properties on Airbnb. I'm sure you guys have heard of that. Uh, realizing that no one at that time was teaching how to build and scale an Airbnb business, he created a training program called BNB Formula. Very, very popular right now. Within 40 days of launching, he did over 1 million in sales. Let me say that again. Within 43 days of launching, he did over 1 million in sales. His masterclass is now the world's best-selling Airbnb training with over six million in sales in just the last two years. He's now taught thousands of people from 38 countries how to build a six-figure Airbnb business with several of his students now doing over a million dollars in bookings. So if no one in the world ever hears this podcast, I'm going to listen myself and implement some of these things myself, Brian, I promise you. Thanks so much for taking time out of your super busy schedule and being with me. Um, I like to bring people, people that are true, people that are real, people that have the heart for business and people that have the heart for helping other people. Guys, I want to tell you something before I ask Brian his first question. When he came on, we were talking about what we needed to talk about. And he was conscientious enough to say, Henry, Who's your audience? Like, what would they really love to learn? And I want to make sure we tailor our conversation so they get the best and most value out of listening to this podcast. He's the real deal, guys. Brian Page, welcome to The Business Fighter. Henry, thank you. I appreciate it. And wow, what an introduction. That, that's one of the best I've heard. So I appreciate that. <laughs> Good. Well, when it's, when it's real, it's right. Uh, and and I'm, I'm so glad, again, that you took the time to join us. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself first, before we even start, just tell people where they can reach you. I'm going to ask you this again in the podcast, tell people where they can reach you, reach out to you and learn some more of what you're doing. This 30 minutes will go by so fast. People are going to yeah. be dying to get to you. Tell them how. Okay. Well on social media, you can find me at, at B Pagester. That's B P A G E S T E R at B Pagester on any social media channel. And my company and my product is BNB Formula. So that's bnbformula.com. You can go there and learn uh, more about what I teach. Excellent, excellent. So in your bio, uh, it said that you became a millionaire in your 20s. Lead me up to what in the world got in your soul to, to go out every day, beat the payment, meet new people. Uh, tell me how all that, we've never talked before, right? Like this is all no. new. So I'm learning too. I wanna, I wanna get into the nitty gritty. What made Brian Brian to get out and become a millionaire in your 20s? Uh, well, you know, ever since I was young, I wanted to be wealthy. It was something that that I I, I just kind of knew that I wanted to be wealthy. It was something I was aiming for. I wasn't sure how to do it. And I tried all kinds of things that didn't work. I was I was in all kinds of network marketing companies, right? money doing that. I tried a couple of businesses that failed miserably. I started a landscaping company that that flopped and couple other ventures that flopped. I just couldn't figure it out. And I think the turning point for me came in my, in my late twenties, I started to get involved with Tony Robbins and I started going to some of his events. Uh -huh. And I remember I came home from one of his, I, I went to everything he offered. I literally bought every single uh, right. event and course that he sells. And I went to one of his events and I came home determined that I was going to finally break through and do, you know, use what he teaches. Right. And I came home and within like two years, I had become a millionaire. Uh, through residential real estate and through investing. And I found a mentor, bought a whole bunch of properties and kind of, I guess, retired at the age of uh, 30 years old. People said, what do you do? And I said, I'm just living off my, my properties, which is what I was doing for a little while, which was kind of exciting. And that was my first, I guess, taste of success when I was young. And, and about what year was that? 
That was, uh, let's see, that was around 2006 or so, right before seven, maybe right before the crash, before the big real estate crash of 08. Real estate crash. Yeah. So did the crash devastate your business? Yeah, I got caught uh, as, as uh, uh, Warren Buffett says, you know, you don't know who's, uh, I think it's quote is you don't know who's naked until the tide goes out, right? <laughs> oh, <that's, laughs> and and so the that. tide went out and I was, uh, I was in the wrong position. I was highly leveraged. I had a lot of debt. I had millions of dollars in debt on many different properties. Right. And it wasn't my rental properties that caused the problem. I had a bunch of speculative real estate. I had built a a seven bedroom, seven bath house on the beach uh, on speculation. I was going to sell it and make a million dollars. And uh, I had a bunch of other properties at the coast. And when the uh, when the economy turned, I was sitting on a whole bunch of real estate that I couldn't uh, cash flow. I couldn't sell. Nobody wanted it. And I couldn't even sell it for what I had into it at a certain point. Oh, no. And so everything went down the tubes. I lost everything. And I ended up not just back at zero. I was I was negative a million dollars. Um, I don't talk about this very much, but I was negative a million dollars in debt. So I was a negative millionaire. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so and so that was where I had to start over from. Guy, the homeless guy who's sleeping in a, in a sleeping bag. Had more yeah, money. yeah, I was exactly. Anybody on the street was a million dollars richer than I was at that moment. Oh my God. I love that. Perspective. How'd you keep going, man? How did you, how did you take that and then just keep going? I didn't. I didn't. For many years, I was I was miserably, I guess, depressed. I, I, I went through a few years where I was just hiding out. I didn't know what what to do. I was I was really, for me, it was a huge blow to my ego. Uh, sure. I thought I was a hot shot, you know, young guy and doing so well, and then and then realized that the when economy changes, it changes. You got to be prepared for that kind of thing. Right. And so I, I I felt pretty much, you know, that I was a failure. And I for years I didn't do anything. I just kind of moped along hoping that I would find something new, you know, some new success. But I, I finally, you know, got fed up with living like that. And at a certain point, I determined that I was going to get back in the game. And I had a couple of good friends that supported me, uh, mentors that said, you got to get back in the game, whatever that game is for you. I, I know you're highly successful now, and I'm, I'm going to get to that in just a few minutes. But I want to I want to go through that period where you were moping along. You may have gained weight. Your health may have died a little bit. i I want you to bring that out because there are millions of people out there right now who have been through things very similar and they're not out yet, dude. They're, they need oh, I know. somebody like you who has been there, done that, got through it and came out on the other side. So let's talk about going through it. Uh, there, there's another saying that says, if you're going through hell, don't <laughs> stop till you get through it. <laughs> you know, like, like keep going. Tell me what that experience was like and, and more of how it made you feel, what you went through, what your body went through, what your friends looked like. I'm sure the guys that hung out with you when you were wielding a million bucks a year weren't the same guys that were there with you in the trenches when you felt like crap. Like, walk me through that a little bit. Yeah, well, at the time I was, I was, I live on the East Coast. I was dating somebody on the West Coast. I decided to move out there to be closer to her. And, and so it kind of just, you know, went out West, didn't know anybody. I uh, went to San Diego, which is a beautiful, beautiful city, but I didn't have any friends there. So I had no social life. I didn't know anybody. Uh, when that whole uh, that whole thing didn't work out, that relationship didn't work out, I ended up moving to Los Angeles. And LA was an interesting experience, but I, I was still kind of just struggling. I was I was just kind of making a few bucks here and there to kind of make ends meet. But I, I knew I wasn't doing what I was meant to do. I knew I was not occupied. I was not operating at my highest level. And I was how kind of just... You know that When you were in the slumps, how did you know that? How do people know that? Is it a, a feeling, a calling? Well, because I'd had that taste earlier. I'd had a success okay. earlier. And I knew that anything was really possible for me. I really believed that at one point in my life, but I stopped believing it. And I was just kind of like, what's the point? What's the point in starting over and doing anything big? I'm just going to do the least amount possible in my life and just kind of get just by, which I think was what a lot of people do. Yep. So I just decided that, you know, I was going to, for a while, for several years, just do the least amount and, and possible and kind of just, you know, I didn't care about anything. And I, I don't know what, how it changed or where I got to the point where I finally said, enough is enough. I got to, you know, my life is ticking by. I got to make things happen. And I, I kind of got to that same point where I did initially where I said, if I could do anything and I knew I couldn't fail, what would I go do? Like, what would I do? How would I start over. Maybe I got to go in a new industry, start a new, find a new opportunity, something that's not, you know, I wasn't going to go back and do what I did before. I wasn't going to go out back to traditional real estate. For me, I was done with that chapter of my life. So, sure. uh, so I was looking for the next thing and I kind of 
I kind of backed into it slowly um, with Airbnb and then Airbnb changed everything in my life um, on many different levels. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let, let's, let's kind of get into that. So you, you were sick and tired of being sick and tired. You knew yeah. that you were made for more than this. And do you think knowing that you were made for more than just getting by, do you think that came from a lot of things that were, that were, that you kind of read, you mentioned doing some of Tony Robbins things, which I've, I've been around Tony as well. Do you think you picked up on some of those teachings and things that you were putting into your your mind that internalized that you just brought you through those hard times? That was part of it, the psychology, but I think it was more of a spiritual thing. And I don't know what people's beliefs are that are. Yeah, that dude, are I, I are, swear, I was. That was my second question. It, you yeah, had, yeah. My father's a pastor, so in my lowest times, there have been some things spiritually that I've had to hold on to that literally pulled me up out of the the crap. And shook me off and said, "Dude, you can do this." Well, you're gonna get a you're gonna get a kick out of this because I'm a I'm a PK as well. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, my dad's a, a pastor, and I I I grew up, uh, you know. So in, you in know. A, yeah, my whole life. So that, but it did it didn't happen so much with my family. It was a it was a a, a pastor mentor friend of mine from California, and I felt almost guilty of like trying to be successful. Like I felt like, eh, that's you can't be successful and spiritual. And yep. he said to me something that really stuck with me. It still stuck with me to this day. He said, if you do anything less than you're capable of with your life, it's an insult to your creator. And I thought that was really, say that again. Say that again. really powerful. Say that again. If you do anything less than you're capable of in your life, it's an insult to your creator. God, I love that. And that because he created you to do more and be more. And, and if you accept less than that from yourself, you're basically saying, and I'm capable of it, but I'm not going to rise to that level. I'm not going to do it. Um, now, if you're not capable, that's one thing. But I think all of us are capable of more than we're actually trying to do in our lives. And it's not about it's not about going after things to fulfill us and to make us happy, because I think sometimes we'll get that thing that we're after and it doesn't really make us happy. It's that we're supposed to stretch and grow and continually um, you know, do more and, and be more because that's what we're capable of. That's what you know, you didn't put us on the earth to do nothing. <laughs> so, yeah, so that really gave me permission. It gave me permission to go be my best person. Wow. You know? Gave you permission to be your best. Yeah. And so you got in there, you got a hold of that. You believed in that obviously enough to say, okay, these last 10 things in my life that I may have tried and failed at and miserably failed at, I've got a relationship that, that broke off. I'm, I'm in a new city. I don't know anyone what the heck do I do? Do I even trust anybody? Why am I even here? But yep. you let that, you let things that you had learned before and the spirituality side mm -hmm. of you, your creator calling you to a greater good, you allowed that to pull you up out of the crap, so to speak. It pulled you up out of average and has now put you into above average. Talk about that transition. What when you when you backed into it, finally gave yourself permission to to try again and go again. Tell me what happened. Well, I didn't know what the opportunity was going to be for me. I just knew, I knew that I had to get my mindset changed to start, start expecting an opportunity to come my way. So I didn't know what it was going to be. I really had no idea. I just was like getting into that expectancy of just feeling like I know something is going to happen and I'm going to be ready for it when it does. Yes. So at the time I, I moved back to the East Coast, I came back to be closer to my family and decided I was going to start over here on the East Coast. And I rented a two-bedroom apartment. I was living with a roommate. At a certain point, he moved out. I didn't have the ability to buy pro property, of course, so I was renting. And I decided to take that room that he was living in, put it on Airbnb, and I started making money with it, which is what everybody does on Airbnb. Right. And um, I thought it was a cool idea, but it wasn't until um, uh, several months later, I was on a, a plane flight. I had a job that I was working. I didn't really love my job, but I was on this flight, sat down next to this gentleman, very wealthy, gentleman that started telling me that he he's an angel investor he buys companies and all this kind of stuff and he started asking me all these questions about airbnb i couldn't figure out why he was picking my brain so much he seemed to be keenly interested in what i was doing with this room and after we were done talking i said why are you why are you so interested in what i'm doing here and he said because i think you're sitting on a gold mine if you can figure out how to scale this you can you have a real business and I said, well, I don't want to buy property again. That's one thing I don't want to do. I don't have the credit to do it. I don't have the ability, nor do I have the desire to go back into debt and do all that stuff again. Yeah. And he said, no, 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 you could lease properties or rent them and put them on Airbnb. And if you do that, you could scale this thing. And that just one little idea. I went home, I did that within six months. I had made hundreds of thousands of dollars on Airbnb and it just took off. 
And then from there, people started reaching out to me and asking me to, to show them what I was doing because nobody was teaching. Yeah. And that turned into a course. I started selling this course, called it the BNB formula. Then suddenly there's thousands of people in 38 countries that are doing this and making money. And then they're, they're sending me emails and videos saying, oh my gosh, I did what you taught. And I, I just quit my job. I'm making all this money on Airbnb. So it, I started snowballing and it just went from there and it kind of changed everything. So it was really, really exciting that it all started with one little idea and just being ready for that new opportunity. So not only did you change your own life and it started with, a, you know, resisting fear, you expected the best for yourself. And not only did you change your own life, but you've made other people's lives night and day difference. You've probably made other people millions of dollars. Yeah, that's the crazy thing. I mean, when I started out, you know, obviously money is a motivator. You're like, oh, I can make money with this. I'm going to do it because I'm an entrepreneur. So I'm always looking for ways to make money. And I, initially that was a big draw for me. Now, when I started getting the stories back, I, I was almost like in tears about some of these stories because I had people writing me. I had teenagers writing me that were, that were making, you know, multiple six figures a year, teenagers. I had people in their 70s that didn't know anything about the internet. And they're writing me and saying, you just saved my retirement. I had no retirement. My kids were worried about me. I had nothing. And now I have an income. And I did it with what you taught. And then people saying, you know, I, my, my wife quit her job and came home. And now she's part time. She's doing this. And all these people that were changing their lives financially, uh, all directly as a result of going through my training. And I thought, man, this is really, really, this is a better, this is a better feeling than making money. It was, it was really was. And so now it's like, wow, this thing is really bigger than I thought. And, um, and it just kind of taken off from there and I've enjoyed it and, and, and been able to do all kinds of cool things because now I'm in the teaching space as well. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And I, and I love it. And you're teaching the audience right here. I always hope that when I interview someone, they're going to drop a, a golden nugget there <laughs> to help somebody. And dude, you've dropped like 10. Uh, I, I always look for the myself. That. No, I'm always looking. I always use that term because I'm always looking for the nuggets as well. And and as you can see, I love books. I read a ton of books. So I'm always looking for one idea. A lot of books only usually have one good idea in them. So I'm always scouring through and looking for the one thing that I can pull out of that book and remember. And uh, and so I believe that's kind of been my whole life is trying to seek out that knowledge. And so for anybody that's listening, that's at that point, I think there's somebody here that can relate to it, that they're just like, they're either stuck or they don't know what to do next, or they've had a huge, massive failure. Uh, or maybe they're just ready to change and do something new. They have to get, first of all, in, I believe, I want you to get in that mindset of expecting something good to happen because then suddenly your mind can pick up on these things you never saw before. Yes. And then when it, when it presents itself to jump on the opportunity and go for it with everything that you have. And, um, and that's, that's my, that's probably the biggest thing I could, you know, give to somebody right now. Tell people if they want more of you, this, this is Henry, the business fighter, you guys, this has been one of my, best guest today. This, this time has flown by. Uh, he, he's got the heart as you guys, if you can't feel it by now, that means you're dead. So <laughs> he's got the heart. He's the real deal. He has struggled his way through adversity. He's lived from coast to coast. He's, he's been to the top of the mountain and then he's been buried under the valley and he's back on top now. So he knows every level of you, of that process. He knows every giant that you've fought because he's fought those giants. He knows those moves. He knows what it's like to lose everything, including confidence in himself. But something pulled him back up he, with his spirituality, with his training, with his expectancy, what he just said. He expected to do better. He knew that he was made more for this. He, more, uh, he knew he was made for more than this. He knew that he had a creator that, that made him in his own image, who is also a creator, and that he needed to grow and create and give and do. And that's exactly what he's doing, not only for himself, but for millions of other people who I'm sure have enrolled in his course and are making money now and changing their lives. And like he said, changing their retirements. Brian, this has been such an honor. Tell people, please, how they get a hold of you. Tell them how they can sure. learn what you do. Sure. There's two ways. Uh, first of all, if you want to learn about what I teach in my training, you can go to discover.bnbformula.com. Discover.bnbformula.com. I do a 90 minute training that just walks you through exactly how I did what I did and how I've taught all these other people how to do the same thing. So you can check that out if you have any interest. But if you just want to learn about what I am about, what I teach that relates to entrepreneurship and success and motivation and those kind of things, I 
Uh, I do a lot of that content on my social media channel. So just look at at bpagester on Twitter or uh, Instagram or Facebook, and you'll find um, I have videos on there. And I think those are really helping a lot of people. So check some of that stuff out if you just want to uh, keep up with me and see what I'm up to. And uh, either way, I, I appreciate if you uh, follow me and I hope you got some value out of what we uh, said here today. Guys, the greatest thing that you could do for Brian and myself, I'm Henry the Business Fighter, the greatest thing that you could do, you might say, you know, those guys have lived the dream. Uh, Brian, I've got a whole story that I can tell you offline of retiring when I was 35 and being, you know, from the janitor's closet to the United Nations. I mean, just, wow. we, I think we could share histories here, but I do, I do know this. I do know how to read people and I do know how to tell people who are authentic. And brother, you are authentic. You're the real deal. You've got that spirit inside of you. You've got love for people. Yes, you're making a lot of money, but you're not. Money doesn't own you. You may have things, but the things I know from just talking to you, the little bit that we've talked will never own you. And I get that from you. That's the kind of people I want to hang out with. That's the kind of people I want to bring to my audience because it's the real deal. And we're all in this together. Guys, reach out. The one thing you can give both of us right now is to share this podcast. Share it with, ten, think, think right now of 10 people that deserve to hear this. Think about people who could grow from listening to this. Just share it with 10 people. That's all, yeah. just 10 people. And then go to where Brian said, uh, uh, listen to him, listen to how he did it. Go, go through the course, sign up for it. Whatever you can do to get more of this guy, get it. Because he's the real deal and he and his processes tried and true will change your life. I, I know it will. Brian, this has been an amazing <laughs> podcast. I, I'm, I'm thinking about 10 more things I want to ask you, but I want to save that for another podcast. I think we've, we've done our, our goodness here today. Uh, connect with me anytime you like. If I can do, ever do anything for you, I'd love to. And uh, man, stay strong and, and keep doing what you're doing. This has been perfect. Well, thanks, Henry. It was a pleasure meeting you and it was an honor to be on your show and uh, hope to definitely talk to you again soon, for sure. Sure, for sure. Okay, man. Have a great day. You too.